Hey guys, Ty here from the Affiliate Solution. Welcome to Five Question Friday, my favorite episode of the week where you guys get to ask questions. What are you doing, right, man? Is that how it goes? No, let a professional ah. do this. Hey guys, Ty from the Affiliate Solution. Welcome to Five Question Friday, my favorite episode of the week where you guys ask questions. We have a go answering them, and today we're doing things a little bit differently. I'm here with Vakey, who's our Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa coach, as well as owner of two Anfit CrossFit boxes and Projects Fit. And we're gonna ask each other some questions. We are. We're gonna mix it up a little bit, uh, and we don't know the questions, and so hopefully we'll get some fire answers. Yes, absolutely. Can I go first? Yeah, yeah. yeah go for it, man. Uh, you're, a pre- you're a pretty calm, placid dude. You don't get angry very much. Mm. And so my first question was gonna be, what's the one thing that infuriates you about our community? Yeah, absolutely. So firstly, when people can't pronounce infuriate. I said it correctly. That, that infuriates me when they can't say that. Uh, but what, what infuriates me about the community? Um, the standard we hold ourselves to, or the lack of standard that we hold ourselves to. Um, I'm all, in, in business or in personal life, I'm all about potential. Like if, if I go to a restaurant that could be amazing and it's not, I get fucking pissed. If it's a crappy restaurant and it's crappy, cool, they've hit their potential. But when I see the majority of boxes that, that can be successful, that can do better, whether it's from the business side of things or the CrossFit side of things, uh, or, or just how they're looking after themselves as owners um, and their family as people and their coaches as, as people, it drives me absolutely crazy. That's, that's why I do this. That, that's what powers me. That's what gets me so fired up um, is when I see people who aren't hitting their potential, who have ridiculously low standards and expectations. You know, The majority of box owners, their, their level of expectation is, oh hey, uh, if we can keep the doors open this month, if we can pay rent, if I can pay my coaches, barely pay my coaches, then okay, yeah, we're doing good, we're here, we're here. Right? It's, th- the standard for success is existing, and that's fucking pathetic, right? That's, that's the same as, as what we consider well uh, in, in the community or healthy within the community. Healthy with, within the, the, the world these days, it's not being fit, it's not being able to use your body as it's intended, it's just a lack of sickness. Yeah. So sitting on your ass and not yet having cancer is healthy somehow. We know as coaches that that's fucking ridiculous. We need to apply that same attitude towards our business. We need to understand, okay, if it can be this, why the fuck isn't it? You know, because there's boxes around the world in every demographic, in every type of economy that are killing it, where the the box owner is making six figures plus, where they're able to spend time with their family, they're able to go on holidays for months at a time, and they've got a business that runs itself, they're not having to be in there every day, they've got systems, they've got coaches who are trained well, who have systems, Uh, you know, there's box owners out there buying a, a house, cash, every year, and we're sitting here going, oh, I hope I can pay rent this this month. It's, it's so fucking crazy. If we can, we should. And, and, and that's what fires me up. I, I have a very short attention span for most kind of businesses or projects in my life, usually three years and I'm done. And I'm as, that, no, I'm more passionate today about the affiliate solution than I was five and a half years ago when I started. And it's just because we haven't hit that potential. The day when the majority of CrossFit boxes hit that potential, uh, I'll quit and do something else. But that's that's what gets me fired up. Any any time you see me get annoyed about something, it's almost always because uh, because someone could be this good and they're accepting that good, and, and that fires me up as well as people not being able to say infuriate. Love it. Great answer. Thank you. <laughs> All right, my question for you: uh, as a box owner, the dumbest decision you ever made? Whew. Uh, I've made them all, that's for sure. Um, it's gonna be hard to pick one. Uh, as, a, as a young gym owner, like when I just started out, I think one of the big mistakes I made, um, even just in a practical sense, setting up my gym, was buying too much gear. Like I remember we did an order from China, uh, me and a few other gyms, and I ordered everything. Um, you know, 12 of every weight kettlebell, 15 barbells of each weight, and I had zero members, I was just opening up. Uh, and then what happened was, um, I had, you know, 10, 15 mums that only, you know, mid 30s with two kids walked to my gym and I had all these 32 kg kettlebells, these heavy barbells and they couldn't use them. So I think one of the big mistakes I made early on was just buying way too much stuff. And so uh, opening my second affiliate, it was awesome to have that opportunity again, to set up again. 
And what I've decided to do now is to actually buy equipment for the clients that come to my door. So I'll wait and see who comes to the door and I buy equipment for them. Yeah. Um, I think that's a smarter way to do it. So that was definitely one of my big mistakes. You guys can't see this right now, but uh, you guys have been open 18 months now, yeah. right? 18 months now, successful box. Over there where the, the bumpers are, we've got 20s, 10s, 5s, uh, two and a halves, 1.25. There, there's no 25s and there's no 15s. Yeah, there's wow. no need for us, oh, no need for it. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can get to all the other weights by just combining those together. So, right. um, yeah, you don't need all the extra fancy things, you know. Um, so, that's definitely one of the biggest mistakes I made. And then I think the second thing, I know you just asked for one, but I'll say another yeah, one, no. um, is comparison. Uh, man, I was, I was super insecure at Jamona at the start, and I would just follow every other box in my area um, and see what they're up to and kind of um, react to whatever they're doing, you know, um, instead of just focusing on what I do. So now I actually, the only people I follow, the only gyms I follow on Facebook and Instagram are the clients I work with mm. to kind of see how they do and keep them accountable. But I've, I've unfollowed all the other gyms because yeah. I'm just trying to focus on what I'm doing yeah. and doing that well instead of being influenced by um, other people's, um, you know, so-called success. Because they don't only put this, you know, they, they pump the, the class full of uh, people that aren't paying, for example, yeah. take a photo of it and it looks like they're really successful and you feel insecure about your, what you're doing. But um, yeah, so that's probably my two major mistakes, comparison and buying too much stuff. Beautiful, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Um, cool, my next question for you. Mm. Uh, you travel a lot and you see a lot of gyms, right? Mm. Um, so I guess my question for you is, I wanna know, is there any unique, like really unique things you've come across or seen that people are doing in their businesses and gyms that the majority of us might not be doing or might not be aware of? Or just some cool, quirky things that people are yeah. you know, doing. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, um, yeah, cool. So we, we travel a lot. For those who are watching who don't kind of understand or who might just have found the affiliate solution, um, in the last uh, in the last three four, three and a half years, uh, we've been to 37 countries. It's about to be 40 after the next few weeks. Um, worked with over 1,600 boxes. We've been to a lot of boxes. You're doing well to find someone who's been to more boxes than us. Um, and so yeah, we get to see a lot of cool shit. Um, get to see a lot of people not hitting potential, which makes me infuriated as well. But um, cool things I've seen. Okay, so firstly, why do I care about cool things? Why do I care about quirky things? Even when they don't work, I applaud box owners for taking a risk, yeah. for trying something else, because the amount of insecurity in the box owning community is fucking out of control. And it comes from comparison, right? What's the box owner doing down the road? What are they doing? Why, are you li why do you give a shit? Are they as successful as you want to be? No, then fuck them. You know, sort your own stuff out. What we need in the CrossFit community is innovators. Yeah. Innovators don't spend their time looking at what everyone else is doing. They, they look at the problem at hand and they come up with an innovative solution for that problem, regardless of what everyone else is doing. So that's what I want to see more of. So some good examples, um, you know, we had one box, uh, I won't talk about the box names for themselves, but we had one box uh, in the Netherlands who sat down with their coaches and said, uh, hey guys, here's all our financials. These are full-time coaches. Here's all our financials. Here's every dollar we make, every dollar we spend. Uh, you know, that complete transparency, which I'm a big fan of, right? That's what we have uh, as a budget uh, available for, uh, for wages. What do you guys think you should get paid? And they let them, they let their staff choose what they should get paid and then what each other should get paid. And then they use like an amalgamation of all those numbers to come up with new pay scales for the staff, right? And the funny thing is, and this is when you know you've got a good staff, the funny thing is, is what they ended up choosing wasn't that different to what they were getting paid anyway. Because the staff are committed, they didn't just want a cash grab. Because if they cash grab, they can see the numbers, that money's gotta come from somewhere else and the box as a whole is gonna suffer. So they understand that, okay, you know, I want to get paid as much as I can, but I've also got to look after the box as a whole. So, you know, how do I balance that? Um, so they didn't end up paying a whole bunch of extra money. It was pretty much much of a muchness, right? But what they ended up with was staff that are incredibly fucking committed, incredibly invested, uh, and they feel like they're respected. They feel like they're valued. Yeah. So that was a really cool one. Another one, again, in the Netherlands, by the way, we see a lot of the European boxes uh, and South American boxes. They're the ones that are innovating more than anywhere else. Kind of those original CrossFit countries where it hit first, definitely the States, uh, definitely uh, you know England, Australia. These are the places where we kind of got just, oh, this is what we do and that's it. And there's very few people that push that mold. I'm seeing a lot of um, kind of uh, innovation coming out of uh, Europe, especially Scandinavian countries and, um, and South America, which I love. Um, I want more innovation out of the US. You guys, it's, it's your thing, do better. Uh, love you. But uh, the other one that came out of um, the Netherlands as well was a box owner 
put in a very specific scent. Um, not just like a normal, you know, uh, you know, someone did a fart, let's cover it up type scent, but it was like, you know, sandalwood or something like that, uh, and put it in their reception, right? And the idea was, uh, we know that, uh, that, that smells are very heavily linked to uh, memory and emotion. So what he was trying to do was to create a repetitive emotion, a positive repetitive emotion every time someone walked through that door. And so they'd have a receptionist on duty and you'd walk in and immediately you'd smell whatever it was, sandalwood. And at the same time, the receptionist would be, hey Ty, how are you? So good to see you today. And creating that positive experience that even if that receptionist wasn't there or wasn't available, just that smell would bring back that emotion. Um, so I, I love that, you know, there's lots of other boxes and, and some of these I agree with, some of, some of them I don't, but you know, running 30 minute CrossFit classes and I see people go, that's not CrossFit, who the fuck says? You know, it, 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 what, what is and what isn't CrossFit? We've got to get pretty kind of far to one side before we get out of what is CrossFit. Um, and you know, that gave them the ability to be able to deliver, you know, more classes throughout the day. And it was still, honestly, it was still a great uh, product. Would I do 30 minute classes? Probably not. But do I think it was a great product the way they delivered it? Absolutely it was. Yeah. Um, you know, other boxes where they're doing classes on the half hour and instead of the one class being here, uh, the, the class actually moves through kind of three stages. So you've got one coach that's just doing warm ups and then after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, they move into the main WOD section of the class. And then after, you know, however many minutes, uh, 40 minutes, they move into the cool down and stretch out part of the class. And that allowed them to be able to rotate through every 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, again, would I do that? Probably not, but I applaud these people for pushing the boundaries, for pushing the limits. And, and one thing I'll say to anyone out there who has a, oh, I've got a cool idea, awesome. Firstly, uh, does it solve a problem? Because a cool idea by itself is just a fucking cool idea. Yeah. Innovation solves a problem. So does your cool idea solve a problem? If it does, cool. Do it, just do it for a month. Yeah. What change could you make that is going to kill your box within a month? You know what I mean? Like you could, you could coach every class in a backwards, you know, Borat G-string, and it's probably, you, you're not gonna make people happy, but you're probably not gonna kill your box because of it, you know? So whatever it is, whatever you're, you're, you wanna do, and you think that uh, we have this problem, uh, or even not a problem, we just think we could do this better if we do this, oh, but no other boxes do that, fuck the other boxes. We need leaders within the community. We, we have far too few leaders that are going out there and innovating and trying new things and, and you know, not giving a shit about what the status quo is within the community. Um, so if you have one of those ideas, if you have an innovation that you think could, could change the community for a better, give it a go, give it a go for a month. Who cares if it doesn't work? If it doesn't work, cool, you know it doesn't work, move on with your life. If it does work, awesome. Let me know and we'll innovate the community together. Uh, so I forget the question, but that was the answer. That's good, yeah, and I think um, I work with a lot of clients that have, have business partners, yeah. and often they can't decide um, whether to implement something or not. And I always tell them, just give it a go for a month. You know, one, one partner might hate it, the other partner might love the idea. Just give it a go for a month. Like you say, you can, you can always then, uh, after that trial period, decide to scrap it if it doesn't work Absolutely. or carry on if it doesn't work. So, yeah. For sure. It's good. All right. Uh, question. Um, for those who don't know, Vakey, bit of a coach superstar, won't tell you himself. Uh, very experienced coach, has an exercise science degree in human sexiness and movement or something, has a level 4,000 CrossFit coach, I think, something like that. Coach's coach, right? Good coach. Um, terrible at the English language, great fucking coach. <clears throat> From a coaching point of view, what do you think coaches around the world need to do better? Um, I think, you know, when I look at coaches, I can identify two extremes. There's the ones that are, are like very good with people, um, and good at maybe kind of facilitating a group, but their technical skills aren't necessarily there, you know? So, and often these people can be um, like the cheerleaders and the people that, um, yeah, I guess they stand around and facilitate the class rather than actually coaching. Yeah. Um, and I definitely, naturally, I, I always kind of leaned towards that extreme. I was, um, you know, I was really friendly and, and uh, I could run a class well, um, but I had to work hard at actually becoming a technical coach. And then you have the other extreme where you're like really technical, lots of knowledge, and just always pouring out way too much on people, um, and have no no kind of perception f um, of you know people's time and, and their attention span. Mm. So I think uh, coaches have to identify where they're at, and they're not often na um, naturally good at that identifying mm. it. They need the help of their gym owners or their head coaches. Mm. So I think a lot of the changes that need to be made is actually um, the owner or the head coach needs to facilitate the change and actually um, you know create a place where the coaches can actually um, grow and learn. So. Um, I sat down with a coach just yesterday and we went through the fact, you know, we went through that kind of um, two, extre two extremes and I explained to him that the way I view his coaching is that he's more at the technical extreme 
and then mm. you spend less time explaining and dumping knowledge and wow. become, become better at actually managing um, the time. So um, I think as gym owners and as affiliate, uh, as uh, head coaches, you've got to make sure you create time and space for your coaches um, to communicate with you, or, you know, where you can communicate with them and give them feedback. And um, I, I think most coaches think that they are the best thing on the planet Earth, right? They think they're the best coaches. And so I think what they just need is a bit more, um, I guess, openness to feedback and openness to, to growth, you know? Um, yeah. And a huge part of that is the, the box owner or head coach or senior coach, whoever's in charge is responsibility. There's this, um, while we're talking about, you know, what there's a lack of in the community, uh, leadership. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, and I'm not just talking about box owners, I'm talking about within your staff leadership as well. Um, there's a lot of box owners, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll see a coach do a class and do a shitty job at a class, right? They'll stand up at the whiteboard and talk for an hour and yay, good work. And they, they just, they, uh, they narrate the class instead yep. of actually coaching it, right? They're not educators. Um, and I'll say to a, an owner like, hey, that needs to change. You need to, you need to take control and fix that and be a lead. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's just, it's just hard to say, it's just hard. It's not, because here's the thing, your coaches want to be better. Right? Any coach who doesn't want to be better will fire those people and find other coaches. But I guarantee you, your coaches want to be better. If you sit down and say, hey, uh, you know, I've got some, some notes on your coaching. Uh, I think it's, you're a great coach, but I think we can make you even better. Let's work through some stuff. They're not going to you know, flip the table and fucking walk out. Yeah. They want to be better. Yeah. You're just too insecure to have that conversation, to sit down and, and talk about it. Or even worse, you do talk to them, but you wait till it's too late. You wait till they're, they're doing something that starts off as, oh, that I'd rather them not do that. And then it turns into, oh, they're fucking doing that again. And then it turns into, oh, I'm gonna murder them for doing this. And then eventually you blow up at them, uh, you know, because they were wearing the wrong color t-shirt or something small, you know? We have to we have to set these expectations and we have to be leaders enough yeah. to follow through on them yeah. and not just, and not be shy about giving people direction and giving people notes, okay? And look, I know, I know there's, today more than ever, there's a lot of box owners who, where they're not the best coach in the gym, right? Maybe they just loved CrossFit. They got their level one maybe, and, and, and you know, they decide to be a box owner, but their head coach is the one who's running the show. Cool, awesome. Someone's gotta be the leader. Someone has to be able to give those notes and pass on their wisdom to everybody else within the box. Yeah. Um, so, I'd, yeah. say, I'd say it's one of the top three areas of the business that uh, owners would avoid. Oh um, yeah. They just, you know, they'll rather spend time on marketing and advertising and, you know, cleaning and whatnot, but uh, they avoid the issue of staff and, mm. and such an important, like they are your lifeblood, your coaches are, they are your business, you know, so you have to step up and, and, um, and help them be better. You've you know? got to get comfortable with confrontation. Yeah, for sure. And, and very quickly you'll realize that these discussions with your coaches aren't confrontational. No, They're all. just a chat and, and you're there, oh man, am I doing that? Oh, okay, you know, thanks for letting me know, I'm going to work harder on that. Yeah. Like, they, I've never once had a coach go, no, I don't do that and then flip the table, take a dump in the corner and leave. It's not how it's gonna happen, right? They'll be happy. So yeah, absolutely, I agree. 100%. Good. Okay, I've got one more question for you. All right. Um, that's a good one, that's a good one. And it's the issue of open gym. Um, I, know, <laughs> I know it gets you going and that's why I wanna ask it. I've got this one right. opportunity. Cool. Um, and I just recently, just yesterday, saw a post on a, a Facebook um, group mm. about, there's an online comp that's running and um, these guys have done the right thing, they've got a booking system, so the members have booked into a class to come and do the online comp, yeah. but they're not supervised, and someone got hurt during the open gym session. No fucking way. <laughs> so yeah, I guess, shocked. <laughs> so my question for you is, uh, not, not just what's your view on uh, open gym, what's a, what's a better solution, what's, yeah. a, what's the answer to it? Because it seems like there's more and more pressure on gym owners to provide an open gym environment. Mm. How do you do it the right way? Okay. Should we just pour petrol on this fucking place and burn the whole thing down <laughs> while we're at it, while we're asking questions like this? All right, open gym, open gym, open gym. Open gym, the idea of allowing people who have no fucking idea what they're doing to choose their own programming, come in completely unsupervised, do any movements they want, and then we're shocked and appalled when people get hurt or when they form cliques, when they turn into assholes, when they become elitist without deserving it, and then it starts to create cultural challenges. You mean that open gym? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, you'll be surprised not. I don't think it's a great idea. I think it's a fucking terrible idea. I think it's one of the top three, uh, I'd call it the top, Top one out of one shitty ideas. Uh, you know, if you said, hey Ty, I hate my culture. What's a good fucking grenade I can throw into my culture to ruin it real quick? Oh, open gym's your jam, for sure. Um, Any time I work with a box and they start talking about, oh, we've got this group that's causing problems culturally. We've got this member who's causing problems culturally. I, I you know, 100 bucks on the line. Uh, is it the open gym? Oh yeah, definitely. 
every time, every time, that's what's causing the problem, right? We've got to look at it, it just doesn't make sense, right? Don't even, don't worry about a business. Think about it like a coach. You're taking people who have no fucking idea what they're doing, oh what, they did, a, uh, they did two competitions one time? Oh, awesome. They have no idea what they're doing. They're usually doing someone else's programming, which, you know, it's, 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 that's a spit in the face at best. You know, and, and then they're gonna come in and work on, what are they working on? Every time I see Open Gym all around the world, it just happens to be their weaknesses that they're working on just happen to be deadlifts, muscle ups, snatches, fun shit that they're good at, right? They're not getting better. They're just, it's just open gym. It's just fun time, right? That's, that's, that's all these people are fucking doing, right? What's the one thing that holds CrossFit together more than anything? What's the one thing that makes us unique, right? Our, 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 our unique selling point, right? We've got constantly varied functional movement performed at high intensity. Cool, those three things are awesome. But the one thing that makes it special is done in a group setting, right? You're suffering and I'm suffering and we're both, we're, that, that's what connects us. That's what makes this special. Otherwise, it's just high intensity interval training. It's just the same shit that everyone else there does. So when we take that away and we start doing open gym, we take away that community. And then we're surprised when there's elitism. We're surprised when clicks start to form and those clicks start to And just, by the way, just doing human shit, right? That's just a human thing to do. Yeah. But why would I fucking facilitate that? That's lunacy, lunacy, right? Um, and then look, we can look at the business uh, ramifications of this as well, right? Um, from your timetable point of view, most boxers, they put their, uh, they put open gym on because they've got free time slots where there's no classes because they don't have enough members for it yet. Um, uh, and, and so they throw open gym there. Maybe they're already at the box. I'm already here anyway, fuck it, I'll put open gym on. But if you want to be successful, and hopefully you do want to be successful, you want that timetable to be stacked. You want it to be stacked with what people come to you for, what they stay for, what they pay for, and for 99% of us out there, that's CrossFit, right? So by putting a placeholder of open gym in there until you're ready for a class, what do you, you think? You think you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have to put that CrossFit class in that spot and your open gymers are gonna go, oh, no worries, boss, I, I understand. No, they're gonna jump up and down and, and carry on like fucking the wombles that they are, right? So from a business point of view, it's very short, it, it, it's, it's very short-sighted. It's not scalable. It's certainly not sustainable, right? Um, yeah, it, it just causes, I, I can't see a point where you would run that classic open gym, come in, do whatever you want model that way. Uh, and for it to not turn into, I'd rather, I'd rather shit my hands and clap. It's not being honest. So what's yeah? So what's the answer? Because yes. I know there's a bunch of gyms out there that do this. Yes. And uh, you know, they're on their computers right now. And they can they can just you know pull the plug like rip off the band aid. But what is perhaps you know if they want to keep their slot there, what's a better way to just structure and run it? Is there an answer? I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, I'll kind of go from what my preference is, the smarter option, and then work up to a medium middle ground, right? So uh, to be clear, in all of my gyms, we had open gym. Right? We, we absolutely had open gym. It was every Saturday morning. It was for three hours. Every one of our coaches was there. Uh, and there were, I think there was four workouts on the board, right? There was a normal CrossFit workout. There was a team workout. Uh, there was a, what was it? Uh, like a strongman workout. Uh, no, the, yeah, there was those three. And then your fourth option was you could do skill, but you could not choose your own workout. Why? Because they're not fucking coaches. They don't know what they're doing, you know? Um, so they could do one of those three workouts or they could work skill and all of our coaches were on staff. It wasn't people coming in doing what they wanted and it certainly wasn't people coming in doing what they wanted unsupervised, right? Call up your insurance company and see how they feel about people coming in and doing dumb shit, which is mostly what people do in open gym, unsupervised. Right? If that person hurts themselves like that, that person did, right, and, and you call your insurance company and go, oh, Susie broke her neck, uh, we need you to cover the surgery, they're gonna laugh and hang up the phone, right? Because you've set the precedent that what we do is only safe, it's part of our selling point, it's only safe in a group supervised coach session, and now you're letting people knowingly do it in an uncoached, unsupervised session. It's lunacy. So, uh, my preferred version of, uh, of open gym is that to, instead of building clicks and, and tearing apart the community, build the community, run it on a Saturday morning, run it as a, we do a three hour session. I don't want people training for three hours, but it's a, a come and go as you please. So we give you the option of you can come in for as long as you want for three hours. Some people will hang around for that long because they're fucking maniacs. Most people will come in for 45 minutes to an hour 
do their bit, do some skill. They've got access to all the coaches so they can get a lot more little one-on-one -on -one skill session stuff done. Hugely valuable, still call it open gym. Uh, and then you're not taking away open gym from your members, you're just restructuring it, right? If you're doing open gym, which most of you who are doing it are, you're doing it for your competitors, and I say competitors, because, you know, they, they do regionals this weekend? Did they? No, they didn't? Okay, they're just fucking members who like to compete occasionally, right? We've got to be honest about yeah. this. Let's not call everyone athletes and put that weight on their shoulders when they're just people who like CrossFit, right? Yeah. Uh, those people don't need to do extra. If your programming is good and benefit of the doubt, it is, why, why do they need to do accessory work? Why do they need to do, you, you've got a, 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 you know, a 43 year old father of two doing double days? What? It's, it's crazy. Um, so for those, those people, the kind of classic open gym model, how do you get rid of that? How do you replace that? Uh, well, my preference is if they wanna do extra stuff, you, the authority, gives them extra stuff to do. You know what works and what doesn't, right? You're the expert. You also know what you're doing, right? You know what your programming is. So instead of going, oh, you're gonna be doing classes. And by the way, a lot of people in open gym aren't even doing fucking classes anymore. You're gonna be doing normal classes. And then if you wanna do extra, then we have extra program. We have real accessory work. It's not just gonna be fun workouts. Some days you're gonna hate it. Some days it's gonna be you know, 40 minutes of core stability and it's gonna fucking suck. And then you're gonna see the people who really wanna be competitors, right? Um, and we're gonna have an area for it. It's gonna be over there. And I'm stealing this from, from Bakey because this is what he does with his gym and this is what he does with uh, Projects Fit, their programming, right? But to do that extra work, to do that open gym or whatever you wanna call this extra, you know, advanced, competitive, whatever stuff, you have to do the class first. To qualify to do today's extra, you know, add-ons, you have to do the class. You have to be part of the community. If you're not gonna do that, you don't get to do the other part. That, that's about as far as I'm willing to stretch because anything beyond there, sure, we might find middle ground between what I'm suggesting and what you currently do, but you're still gonna be causing a, a net negative effect to your community, uh, so, so why settle for that? Sure. Um, so yeah, look, I know, and I know there's a bunch of you guys that are pissed at me right now, <laughs> but you being pissed doesn't make what I say wrong, it just means that it's un an uncomfortable truth. Yeah. yeah. I really like the idea of having three options on the board and having coach and staff available to help people through those and yeah, and yeah coach them essentially. So. Yeah. It's just a different form of a class. It's a yeah. fun, big, community-driven you know, class. I love those days. They're my favorite days to teach. Awesome. You know, well, mate, well done. Yeah, it's, that's five. Sorry for firing you up on a Friday. Yeah. I, I didn't say too many swears. No, you didn't. It was good. I Proud of you. All right, guys, there you go. That's five question Friday with myself and Vakey, our superstar coach. Uh, if you've got any other questions, we're, why do you think we're doing this? We're out of questions. If you've got any other questions, drop a comment below and I'll answer them next week or uh, shoot us a message and I'll answer them uh, in private. You can ask to have them answered an anonymously. But besides that, guys, for myself, from Bakey, have an amazing, amazing weekend. You fucking deserve it. I'll see you next week. Mwah! I love you all. Boom.